If you don't want to watch this whole thing, the short answer is probably never. During a 12-day celebration called Akitu, Babylonians would make promises to their gods prior to sowing season. Spring was the beginning of the new year for them, and if you kept your promises, the gods would bestow good fortune upon you. The ritual is likely why we still make New Year's resolutions 4,000 years later. It's our opportunity to start anew and to do better. But for your brand, resist the temptation to make changes, for the marketing gods may not look favorably upon you. If you've ever hired more than one marketer for your company, it's likely that marketer number two came in and told you to change all the stuff that marketer number one did. Your logo's too old, the website is wrong, your advertising is here, and you should be advertising there. Sleeves get rolled up and we excitedly begin to break things that aren't broken. Changing your brand, or even elements of the brand, should be approached with all the apprehension of a bomb squad. Your brand only exists in the mind of the customer. The fact that you're in your customer's mind at all is a miracle. Let me put it another way. Most brands aren't in our minds. Most people don't know most businesses. When should you change and when should you absolutely not change? Well, let's get the easy ones out of the way. You should change things when your name is a liability, like Theranos, Enron. Bernard Madoff Investment Securities, or the AIDS Diet Plan. AIDS may taste like a candy, but AIDS contains one of the most effective appetite suppressants you can buy, and there's no stimulant in AIDS that could make you nervous. With AIDS, I ate less, so the weight came off. Oh, jeez. Your product or service is outdated. Mr. Terwilliger's fax machine repair, for example. You're entering a new market, and your current brand doesn't fit. Like, for example, Toyota and Honda are not luxury car brands, so they invented Lexus and Acura so they could play in the luxury car market. There are likely other valid reasons, but you get the idea. If there is a major tectonic shift in your business or your product or your marketplace, then you might want to consider a change. Here's why you should not change things. Because you're bored. Because you hired a new marketing firm. Because a customer complained. Or because you watched a YouTube video. The temptation to want to shake up the snow globe and change things is, is very seductive. We're all business owners and entrepreneurs, and we like things that are new and exciting. But our customers like things comfortable, predictable, and consistent. That's not marketing theory, that's neuroscience. Nobel winner Daniel Kahneman introduced us to fast and slow thinking in the brain and wrote about cognitive biases in the 1970s. Dr. John Sweller coined the term cognitive load and described how our brains look for and prefer shortcuts. In other words, when deciding between two brands, our brains gravitate to the one we recognize. Learning new things when we don't have to increases cognitive load, and our brains have better things to do, like breathing. And this is why changing things up is so risky. Memories are built by repetition. Let's look at the Campbell's Soup label. 125 years of looking pretty much the same. White script, red banner, and a gold medallion in the center showing a prize that was won at the World's Fair in 1900. Even a recent update brings very subtle changes. Imagine if they just suddenly changed just because they wanted to make it modern and appeal to millennials. Whatever memories had been established in the customer's mind would be squandered. Reaching for the familiar can becomes difficult and the brain would look for the next friendly thing it sees. Congratulations, Progresso. Your company has colors, logos, phrases, sounds, music, even attitudes. Start messing with those things and it's no different than showing up to work each day with a different wig or a mustache. It might be novel at first, but eventually it will just frustrate people. Now, some of this may sound like it's in conflict with the idea of being unique and interesting and different. Another neuroscience reality is that of habituation. That's when something is so commonplace it becomes practically invisible. You know, like the, the low hum of your refrigerator or the crack that's always been in your wall. That's a lesson for another day, but it's like a waltz. A step forward, a step to the side, a step to the back. Keep it interesting, but keep it within the bounds of the elements you've already established for your brand. 
Would love to know what you think about this. Please leave a comment in the comments below or send me an email, johnny at molsonpartners.com. If you are watching this before February 1st, I invite you to go, to, go over to wizardacademy.org and sign up for Martinis and Marketing. This is a day-long virtual marketing class that is being taught by Chris Matic and me. And what we're going to do is spend the day building a story that your business can be proud of and probably drink a couple of martinis while we're at it too. So go to wizardacademy.org and sign up. And in the meantime, keep musing about marketing because that's what I'm doing. Thank you.